Welcome back, everybody, to the Social Media Show. I'm your host, Sam Dever, and we are now joined by an extremely special guest and personal friend of mine, Enrique Gomez. Yes, Enrique, <laughs> welcome to the Social Media Show. It is thank a pleasure, sir. Sam, thank you. I, Las Vegas. How did how'd you get into the whole hosting? Las Vegas, scene? Las Vegas started in for me in 1988 when I came on a on a Christmas vacation with my uncle. Okay. And they said, if you get good grades, we're gonna send you on a special trip and you know now I realize that it has changed my life but we came to visit the uh, you know the city of lights so I could see the cars and hotels and restaurants which was one of my number one right things to do when I was uh, when I was a little boy I was eight years old in 1988 um, did you have any idea at that time that you'd be here now, doing what you do now. I always thought about uh, of Las Vegas as a great place of where, if you had a if you had a, a, a an idea or you know an an illusion, a dream, this is where maybe you could come and lay it out, right? And it could possibly happen. When I saw at the Tropicana Hotel the round section of slot machines. And a yellow Corvette up there, <laughs> that if you got the yak, you know the jackpot, right. it will come down. That was uh, that was kind of the, you know, dreams come true. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're right. Like you just see like these Porsches, Corvettes, win this, and that's probably why they make a lot of money. It's because everyone's trying to win that. <laughs> but no, you, I think you hit it on the head. It's it just seems to be such a kind of place for free spirits or open. There's no. No, everyone's willing to try something once here. Like everyone seems open to new ideas, and you being in the promotions business, it seems like you've probably heard them all and seen multiple things done just to try to drive business. Well, you know, it's a very, very unique <clears throat> way of uh, of how the casinos set the pace, and then everybody else needs to uh, run with it. And mm. there's so many different small enterprises within the structure that after you know putting everything together from a hotel management perspective restaurant management perspective um, lounge bar hotel casino all overall experience just walking on the street maybe standing in front of the Bellagio and seeing the the fountains you know go right. and look around and see that there's never an end and there's never a beginning. Everybody wants to experience something that they're open to uh, what the city has to offer. Now, the city can just be by itself. And like any other city, if there's a successful business, the competition wants to be greater than that. And they would like to crush the neighbor because right. you want to be the number one. In Las Vegas, I love the business because restaurants, uh, the nightclubs, you know, even goes to the hidden secret slice pizza place. Cosmo. You need to be friends with your neighbor, not only in the same building, but across the street and at the end of the strip because you want to have a family. So when guests come over to Las Vegas, they say, hey, why, where should I go? Should I stay here in your hotel? It's like, what would you like to experience? Mm, and interesting. we sell the whole city. People don't see Las Vegas as, you work here, you want all my money here. We want to make sure that they can come in, have fun, run around in this amazing playground and go back home ready to book a, another flight to come back. Absolutely. And, and that's interesting what you said about, you know, getting to know your neighbors and not trying to crush them more, but trying to help each other. And I'm finding, and I'm sure you can attest to, Vegas, for the tourists that don't know, it really is a small community once you start networking. And it, it feels like kind of like high school or a college campus, kind of. Like once you start getting <laughs> exactly. networked with, within the strip. I mean, do you feel that way sometimes? Like you know, everyone I, knows everybody. When I first when I first moved here, it was in um, 
at the beginning of 2008. And I had started to visit Las Vegas constantly six to eight times a year in 07, 06, 05, 04. And started to get a feel of the city if it will be, you know, a possible place for me to come and develop something else and continue my hotel career mm -hmm. so I could top it and the hotel restaurant management. And you said, this, the city is huge. When I came in, I realized that the city is really small. You go, you meet people that they've been working in the casinos since they, since they open and they're still doing the same job and they're happy, and they have the same guests coming over and over year after year, meeting, you know, now they met they met them, they served their drink when they were on their honeymoon, now they're serving their drinks for their children, wow. now for their grandchildren. And that triggered in my head the power of, you know, the personal touch that somebody can create that if you were my favorite bartender because you made my drink just the same way, even before I probably walked into the bar and you saw me and you're already pouring my drink, right. um, I would be willing to pay whatever price you wanted to give it. I would drink any size you wanted me to drink it. Now you are actually telling me pretty much how to enjoy myself. And if you move to the bar next door, that would probably be the last time I went to that bar. So I will be following you. And the the Wynn Hotel, Encore, MGM, big enterprises have been developing all these concepts and we can see through the years, if you pick up a, you know, kind of the Vegas history book, they went from blinking lights to maybe, you know, the, the big buffets to the right. smaller, um, restaurants, um, the, uh, the, the bars, the pools. Now we put umbrellas. Now everybody's trying to follow each other, outdo each other, maybe kind of theme park. We have volcanoes and <laughs> lions, you know, and my, in my t time frame coming into Las Vegas, the power of people following people and enjoying the experience is what opened up the, I would like to be part of this nightlife industry that took off in a very, very strong uh, direction, um, probably from the last, you know, eight, six years. And if it's one thing that uh, amazes me, like when you live here, you kind of, you get localized and you kind of forget, don't forget about the strip, but you're not acting i used to call myself the local tourist because i'd be down there every single weekend you know act with all of them but there really is just an insane amount of people that are just flying in daily spending money coming back like you said you know waiting till they come back so i think you definitely hit it on the head and we have a couple more minutes here before our break uh kind of dive into uh how i met you with blush nightclub because i thought and that was how you and i connected and can you tell us a little bit about your experience with that so to uh, to put it in small words, um, it was a great and, and amazing pleasure meeting you. You know, now we're having here yeah. uh, a one-on-one -on -one talk about you know the professionalism and the uh, and how the city is is run by very key individuals. And after all the hotel room division that I had the opportunity to experience there in the hotel. Um, I wanted to take all that five diamond, five star experience that I gained and then bring it into that boutique nightclub where people step in and they want to feel, you know, polished, taken care of. You know, people say, is it going to be a good party? And then I'll ask, what's a good party for you? I'll, I'll make it happen. Mm, customize it. Yeah. So when you will send me the text and say, hey, you know, I'm coming over. You were at like, the door gotta every go to, time. Gotta go to the door and every time. greet the guy. You were fast. <laughs> like I'd literally make that left. I'd come in win win parking deck two. I'd come in, and I usually be with DJ Rhino, and uh, I'd be like twenty seconds out maybe. I'm like, hey, on the way there, I just get there. Boom, he's there. <laughs> there waiting. Come on in. And that's one thing that really 
I really like about you, and I think you do an amazing job, is you really bring that professionalism in treating, no matter how big the customer is or how small they are, treating them like a star. And I think that's why you've been successful, and that really is something I observed from you right off the bat. So I just you do an awesome job of that. I think. Oh, thank you. That that yeah. is the main thing, yeah. really. You know, guests guests are looking for that one moment where, in the back of their head, are saying, "I wish I had ten thousand dollars in my pocket," right? Because I would like for you to tell me how to in, enjoy myself, and it goes from ten dollars to a hundred, maybe one thousand. Where would you like to eat? What is your favorite drink? You know, have you seen this? You know, it's time for you to go to bed, but let me show you this. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so there's. I was gonna go to bed at three. Now it's eight a.m. There right. is always something on the on the on the sunrise here. No, right. it doesn't matter what's uh, was the the time of the day. Absolutely, and we're we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna talk about your new venture, where you're at now, the Cosmopolitan. Exactly. We're with Enrique Gomez. We'll be right back. Thank you.